I'm delighted to introduce uh, our session on the UAE, um, which is industry leaders from the UAE, UAE, the United Arab Emirates, working together for hospitality tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to invite Gerald Lawless to come up on stage, who's an ambassador for the World Travel and Tourism Council, who is the foreman chairman of the WTTC advisory board member, of Expo 2020. And uh, Raki, I can see you on stage. Good to see you, Raki. Uh, as I, Gerald's been a great supporter, a great friend of mine over the years. Uh, he has uh, been instrumental as president and CEO of Jumeirah Group. He called upon me uh, when we launched the, uh, the Arabian Hotel Investment Conference some 15 years ago and he uh, was a great supporter of that initiative as we brought the industry together for the region. So uh, let me introduce yourself. Raki, you're the CEO of the RAC TDA uh, board in Russell Kamer. How are you seeing life at the moment in Russell Kamer? We're starting to see a little bit of recovery. Things have started to open up a little bit. We're still being extremely careful and cautious to ensure that everything is safe. Um, but, uh, but I think now that things are starting to open up slightly, um, we are seeing a little bit of recovery coming up and, um, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, by the time uh, the summer hits properly, hopefully travel could be back to normal to some degree, but we're taking great, great precautionary measures. I know you've got a big strategy in place at the moment in terms of your, um, uh, of looking forward over the next 12 months, 18 months. Tell us a little bit about your, your go forward plan. Yeah, so we created a, a stimulus package that we launched uh, first week of April to really help the businesses that are struggling to be able to survive, to continue with their cash flow, to uh, ensure that employees are in place. And we're very happy that we did that because it really helped a lot of the businesses in our industry to continue. And now moving forward, we have put a really um, focused plan on domestic travel. So looking at what we're calling our shortcations, uh, which is our own little phrase about showing how close the proximity is, uh, Russell Kema is to Dubai and the rest of the Emirates and opening it up to the nature travel, the less crowded experiences, uh, and we've got a great campaign that's that's getting ready to be launched as soon as the time's right. Excellent. Um, now, good for you, because one of the things that Jerry Inzarello was talking about was communication. And uh, I think you guys have done an extraordinary job. I'm lucky enough to sit on the board uh, of RAC TDA as an advisor, along with Gerald Lawless. And I can really see that you you pivoted really quickly in terms of your uh, your communication and speaking to the industry. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Jerry actually brought it up perfectly. You have to communicate, whether it's the good news, whether it's the bad news, you need to be able to share everything. And we took a really exerted effort to be able to go out and communicate where we are in the, in the steps. We don't have all the answers. We're figuring a lot of this. We've been through many crises throughout our lifetime, but nothing like this. I know I've, I was in, in hotels in Orlando when 9-11 happened. Um, you know, we lived through a couple of Gulf Wars and, and the crisis and the finance, nothing like this. And the important thing is we're figuring it out with our partners. We communicated where we are, what we know, what are the measures that we're taking. And, uh, and we're blessed because Russell came as a great small community. We all got together and, and I'm happy to see that things are are moving in the right direction, but thank you. And just, I, I don't know how many people in, in the audience here know where Russell Kamer is. So maybe you can just provide, yeah. provide a few so, details. So Russell Kamer is the northernmost emirate of the UAE. We're located 45 minutes outside of Dubai. We're known as the nature emirate. Uh, we've got the highest uh, mountain in the UAE, Jabal Jais, the longest zip line in the world, 64 kilometers of white sand beaches um, and the desert. Um, some of our, uh, we're known as a great destination to go away. So right now, if people are in quarantine, we really have a sense that once things open up, 
uh, rack is going to be extremely popular to be able to escape. Um, we also have a convention center. We were blessed to host AHIC um, uh, last year at, at Alhamra Convention Center. And we've got a wide variety of hotel options, everything from two Ritz-Carlton's, a Waldorf Astoria, um, uh, great hotels right on El Merjan Island, and also some glamping experiences. So just a wide variety of options. Hmm. And you're also doing quite a lot on the whole sustainability side as well, aren't you? It's a big focus of ours. It was one of our key pillars for 2020 uh, to really develop the destination moving forward to be sustainable, both from a... Um, environmental perspective, but also um, sustainable from a cultural perspective and sustainable from an economic perspective. And a lot of those measures have been put in place so that we don't open up as a big mass destination, but really have healthy organic growth moving forward. A little bit about uh, events, real events, is because you actually can see the person and you can grab them on stage, whereas with using this technology, it's slightly more difficult as we work from home. But Marwan, Lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Hi, all. Uh, Raki, Gerald. Uh, good to see you all, uh, especially uh, in, a, in such a situation, being all connected. Marwan, Ramadan, Kareem, good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Ramadan, Kareem. Inshallah, Alik. So Marwan is executive chairman of the Sharjah Investment and Development. Anyway, welcome and also Ramadan, Kareem. And uh, I'd also like to say Ramadan, Kareem to all our Muslim delegates around the world who are, uh, are here today as well. And I'm sure you're all looking forward to uh, having uh, a very happy Eid <laughs> in a few days' time. Mm -hmm. as well. So uh, nice to have you with us. Um, at the moment, I think we're still waiting for His Excellency Ali Al Shaiba, is, uh, but I think we'd better start because obviously time is a bit limited. And uh, as well as uh, introducing you, so we have at the top left-hand side of the screen, so I'll do it in that way, we have Mr. Raki Phillips, who's the uh, CEO of the Raz al Tourism Development Authority, which for disclosure, I would say I'm also honored to be a member of the advisory board of the Raz al Tourism Development Authority. So lovely working with you, uh, Raki, and looking forward to hear you talk to us more about the great emirate of uh, Raz al -Khema. And then we have uh, Ms. His Excellency Marwan uh, Jassim al Sarkal, who is uh, Chief Executive of the Sharjah Investment and Development Authority, known as Sharuk. And uh, we're really looking forward to hearing so much about the uh, Emirate of Sharjah and all the various initiatives you've taken not only in tourism, but also the various investment initiatives. And I've got uh, quite a number of questions, comments and everything for all of you. But I'd just like to kick off for the benefit of our uh, delegates. And uh, this paper will actually be available uh, as, as a PDF. It's from the World Travel and Tourism Council. And it was published very recently, just giving an update for tourism of 2019. And um, since today's event is very much about, but our figures do show from the World Travel and Tourism Council that the contribution of travel and tourism to the GDP of the United Arab Emirates is already 11.9% of the total economy. That's 5% up on the previous year. And it contributes in jobs, not far off a million jobs, 745,200 uh, jobs uh, within the country. And the international visitor uh, impact has uh, one, 141 billion or about um, about 60 billion dollars of uh, income uh, to to the country in terms of uh, travel and tourism. I think we also had some very interesting figures to show that where the business is coming from and it was interesting listening to our Indian delegates in the sessions uh, before we moved to the Middle East uh, with the time clock. Uh, talking about their economy and to see as well that India does provide 12% of inbound arrivals to the United Arab Emirates and equally or that's very importantly and particularly in terms of average spend would be Saudi Arabia with 9%, United Kingdom with 8% and China with 6%. But uh, genuinely that's a, enough for me. So I'd like to ask His Excellency Marwan Jazam al Sarkal. Uh, if you could start by telling us more about the importance of travel and tourism to Sharjah, and we have some specific questions for you later, but I'm sure, uh, Marwan, you'd like to talk to us about what happens within Sharjah and within your function and um, within Sharuk. 
Sure. Thank you, Gerard. Uh, and uh, nice to see you all, uh, Raki, Jonathan, and I think Ali is also joining us. Uh, it's great to, to be here talking about uh, the, the hospitality, but uh, it's nice also to know what's happening in, in Sharjah. In the past uh, decade, uh, the Sharjah Investment and Development Authority, Shuruq, has uh, played a major role in transforming this tourism industry in the Emirate of Sharjah. So it looked at tourism into the different sectors. One, which is heritage tourism that we promoted out within the heart of Sharjah project, which, where today we have the Chedi, which is one of the most unique uh, hotels in the offering and the vicinity of the historical area of Sharjah. I'm talking about history that goes back to 1500. Uh, so old houses that have been restored and opened up to become a very unique uh, positioning uh, for Sharjah that fits what Sharjah is about, culture, art, centric. On the other hand, we looked at tourism in a different level. So we thought about developing projects that are more about exploring the sites around Sharjah. Maybe uh, to a lot of people, uh, Sharjah is unknown. Uh, so what we try to do is promoting the other destinations. So Sharjah is divided into three different areas. One, which is the eastern region, the central region, and the western part of Sharjah. In the central region of Sharjah, we have archaeology that goes back to thousands of years, uh, thousands of years goes back to the Paleolithic age, to Neolithic age, all the way to the pre-Islamic age. What we developed there uh, uh, in, in, in an area called Mleha, an archaeological center, and next to it, we created a retreat called Al-Faya Retreat, where you have five rooms in the middle of the desert that was converted from a fuel pump station to a retreat. You sit there around the desert and the mountains. And next to it, we created this desert oasis, and we called it al Bidayr retreat, which is basically a Bidayr is a known area for the biggest sand dunes in that part of Sharjah. So today you have a be beautiful location and all of all of those projects are very limited in the number of rooms. So you have 30 rooms or 31 rooms in Al-Bidayr, five rooms in Al-Faya with a sea salt spa. And on the East Coast, uh, Kelba is known for its ecotourism uh, location. It has the mangroves, it has the Indian Ocean, it has a protected sites. And so we came up with a concept called the Kingfisher Retreat, where you're actually living in a, in a tented camp, uh, more of a glamping experience and experiencing nature and environment. And what is the nice thing about it is that every one of those uh, hospitality uh, projects that we've done is different. Uh, one has a twist of archaeology, the other has history, one has environment, the other has desert. And within this whole portfolio that we developed, we developed also destinations. So we have developed Al Majaz waterfront where you have restaurants and coffee shops and a beautiful uh, Khalid Lagoon view where you have the biggest one of the biggest lagoons in the area with the water water features and fountains that are functioning every every day. And we have Al Noor Island, which talks about arts and you 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 basically indulge yourself with nature in an island that sits in the in the in Khalid Lagoon. So between arts and culture and heritage and history, this is sort of a pro of, of a portfolio that we created for the tourism industry in Sharjah. Well, thank you very much, uh, Marwan. And it's interesting as well, uh, because as we go through the other two emirates of Ras Al Khaimah and Abu Dhabi, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll hear of uh, also similar products. But what, what investment have you made in Sharjah that is really your USP? What is, what is different about Sharjah than any other emirate? Uh, when we talk about Sharjah, we, we, we talk about authenticity. And this is something that is uh, that a lot of people would think that the UAE is, goes back to the 1971, whereas it goes back to hundreds of years. So they were crucial states, they had history, the, every emirate maybe by itself was more like a country. They had their own, they had their own history, but they all even have their own economy. And so what we tried to do is we, we, we wanted to showcase what Sharjah is about. It's about the heritage before 1971. And I think the USP of Sharjah is the heart of Sharjah project, which is the historical area of Sharjah, where you have the old souks, where you have the, the museum. Where you, we have like more than 20 museums in, 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 in Sharjah, and nine of them sits in that area and talks about the history. But today, if you go to that area, you can actually uh, stay in that area because we opened the Chedi Hotel, which basically puts everything into into the right content that before you can only visit now you can actually visit and stay in an emirati house well, but okay if, if i was an investor for example and i'd like to invest in sharjah what can you do for me well what, what would be your your special offers that you have for a potential investor either from within the country or from outside yes. 
Yes, we we actually encourage investors to come to Sharjah. So in Sharjah Investment and Development Authority is 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 here to support you with giving you data and information, but also give you opportunities. So within our uh, our uh, our role is basically we have a land bank. We have different locations of lands in, within Sharjah. So Sharjah is Sharjah, which is the western part, which is next to Dubai. Then you have the central region that is connecting Sharjah to the other Emirates, and then you have the eastern region where it is next to Khorfakan and Kalba. And each of those locations, each of those uh, cities, we have locations for investors. So what we, we do, we encourage investors to invest in retreats, in resorts, but also convention hotels. There is a limited number of uh, five-star hotels, but also resorts in Sharjah. So in partnership, we came up with a partnership with Eagle Hills to develop the Palace Hotel, which is going to be in Al Khan area, which is on the beachfront of, uh, of the Arabian Sea. We're also... Uh, entering a joint venture with Eagle Hills to develop uh, a hotel in uh, in Kalba, which basically sits on the lagoon of Kalba. So what we're trying to do, we are sitting with uh, with investors and showing them the numbers. Sharjah numbers are really uh, in a healthy status but, because the number sorry of Sorry to interrupt you because of time wise, but if I was say a foreign investor, would I be able to come in uh, to Sharjah and then would I have to have a, a, a local UAE partner as well? We can actually, Shuruq can actually become also a partner with an international investors in different senses. Uh, but we are there to give you the right location, studies, and the support. Thank you very much, Marwan. Very comprehensive. We will come Thank back, to, hopefully, if Jonathan allows us the time. Now, Raki, yes. tell us what you've got that nobody else has, <laughs> which I'm sure you, you, you can keep us going for a few minutes on that. Marwan touched on the history of the UAE, and, and in fact, uh, uh, you know, Ras al Khema has probably the, 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 the longest history in the UAE. We've got um, history that dates back to 7,000 years. We've got. Um, and when, when Marwan was talking about the restoration of certain things, we've just done a phenomenal job of restorating our Al Jazeera Al Hamra, which is a 19th century fisherman's village. Absolutely stunning, um, a heritage site that we, we, we've been working on and we're planning to launch it as a new attraction. Hopefully, once we're out of this um, this period of time, but Russell Kima offers a wide variety of things, and and the fact that we have the highest mountain in the UAE, we're really focused on developing mountain tourism. Now, this is something that's you know pretty common in places like maybe Whistler or Breckenridge or or the Swiss Alps. So 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 we're trying to do see what 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 those attractions are like, what those destinations are like in the summertime because the weather's great and we'd be able to do that. So we're putting a lot of attractions up on the mountain, including the Bear Grill Survival Camp, which should be um, uh, operational right after the summer, um, the highest restaurant in the UAE, 1484, obviously the longest zip line and some other attractions that we're doing, some stunning hiking trails. Um, but we're also really working on the culture and the history and the museums that we've got and some of the great hotel options that are that are coming around. Um, and it's exciting to be a developing destination. We're a destination that you will see the changes and the things that are happening in, in the years to come. And it brings us a lot of joy to be part of it. And so what kind of numbers are you looking at, uh, say for 2019 or if 2020 hadn't had the that we're having at the moment with the virus? What would you what what numbers in terms of uh, international visitors do you think you would have achieved? So in 2019, we did just under 1.2 million visitors. 40% um, of them are domestic, and 60% are international. Al Khema is the number one destination for the domestic traveler. We're great for staycations. And before you joined, Gerald, I was telling Jonathan about our shortcation campaign that we're launching right as soon as we're ready to, uh, considering the crisis. We were looking at an annualized growth to get us to 2025, where we'd be right under 3 million visitors. So our focus for tourism has been quite uh, aggressive. And the fact that we were the fastest contributor to the GDP of the Emirates um, plays a very vital role. And I think you touched on it, uh, how almost 12% of the country's GDP goes towards tourism. So it is a big focus, it's a great way to, um, for employment, and there's a lot of other things. Oh, fantastic. Can I just say a second to welcome His Excellency Ali Ali Shaiba, who's finally got through from Abu Dhabi, if I may, uh, for both of you just to, to finish off. Because, Raki, I thought I was very disappointed to learn. I thought I was the oldest guy that ever did the zip line, but you tell me I'm not. <laughs> but you'll have to that to be at some stage. 
Well, I do think the uh, the whole uh, niche of of adventure tourism, uh, what you've achieved there in the uh, in the Emirate of Razakema, is indeed very interesting. And I see Marwan dying to say something as well about. I, can you can you also tell us about the numbers in Sharjah that uh, of international visitors that you're experiencing? Well, uh, the the nice thing is that we try we. We opened new areas that nobody have experienced before. So, for example, when you opened the Kingfisher uh, retreat, uh, it's managed, by the way, by MISC. This uh, this operation was something that's different because it's about talking about glamping. So you stay in a tent. It's more about a safari experience, like the, the thing that you go to South Africa, for example, or Kenya or Namibia. And we found that most of the tourists are actually local tourists. They are locally coming from Abu Dhabi, from yeah. Ras al-Khaimah. They're not really international tourists, but now we're, fe we're, we're feeling that at the, at the beginning of the year that they were picking up international tourists. We're having excellent occupancy, even at this current situation where within, within a, uh, I would say, some of, some of the cities had full lockdown. We had 100% occupancy on weekends. And I think people are willing to go to areas that are out in the nature, far from each other. They don't want to go to a place where they are uh, with a lot of people on a breakfast, they want to have their own private location. And I think this is why today we find our retreat in Kingfisher is exceptionally doing well, even in this situation that we are in. And tell me, Marwan, are, are most of your uh, your facilities open? Like, are the hotels open in Sharjah? Are yes. the hotels closed as well? I presume there are. There, there, uh, I'm not sure about any hotels that are closed, but our hotels, the five that I spoke, uh, the four that I spoke about, they're all open. Uh, we managed to to make sure that we sign agreements with uh, with some of the health providers. So, for example, for the Chedi, we've signed an agreement with VPS. So, if you want a health experience, we can come. We're not talking about a COVID nineteen positive. We're talking about people that are ordinary people that would like to do a health experience. We we cr we try to create an engagement between us with health providers. On the other hand, for Al Badair with Misk or for uh, Kingfisher, they are doing really well. One of them, which is very exclusive, which is Al Fire Retreat, that is only five rooms in the desert. So if one family can actually come and take the whole retreat. And it's something that you would see in South Africa, maybe in Melbourne, that sort of an experience. And before we go on to Ali, could I just come back to Raki? And it sort of applies to Sharjah and I'm sure Abu Dhabi as well. But you, you strike me, uh, Raki, has been very well positioned along with Sharjah and the other Emirates, especially on the East Coast too. Uh, to be able to avail of what we all believe will be the first part of recovery from the virus situation will be domestic tourists. And uh, how are you going to do this? I mean, it gets pretty hot in the summertime. And I know you spoke to Jonathan about it, uh, Raki, but maybe you just give us uh, 30 seconds on it. Yeah, how it's going to start. We, just like uh, Marwan said, it's the same thing for us in Ras al-Khaimah. We, some of our hotels really did well, like the Ritz-Carlton, Al-Wadi, which is a villa-style resort. Um, but I, we will be ready to be able to welcome the guests domestically. It's a close drive. The temperature is a four degrees cooler than than, than maybe some of the Southern <laughs> Emirates. Um, plus, you've got the where it gets a little bit cooler the higher you go up. Um, but at the end of the day, I think I think what we want to do is bring people together safely and cautiously, and people will want to yearn to get out of their houses, get out of quarantine, and come back to some form of normalcy. And we hope to be able to offer that at our resorts. Thank you very much. And now, at last, we can talk to His Excellency Ali Al Shaiba. So please tell us uh, uh, just. A bit about because of course Abu Dhabi is the largest emirate in the United Arab Emirates, and we always associated with, uh, with with the oil production of the country. But of course, you have a, a rich, rich heritage there as well, and some amazing cultural developments uh, over the last number of years. And as well as having Abu Dhabi, you have many other parts of the emirate, including of course Al Ain and Al Dafra, which were there recently at the at the Camel Festival, which was very interesting. So please, uh, Mr. Ali, please tell us about uh, your lovely emirate, Abu Dhabi. So as you said, uh, we are the, the largest emirate uh, in the UAE and we are the capital of the UAE. So uh, the region is the, across uh, different areas. As you said, Abu Dhabi is the, the mainland, which is uh, the biggest city there. And also we have Al Ain, which we consider it more into an uh, adventure uh, kind of a city. Uh, with an experience of adventure as well in, in, in Al Ain, where we have the mountains and we have the oasis there, and we have a more into cultural and adventural uh, experience as well. 
beside this, we have uh, Al Dafra, which is the western region. Uh, it has two different uh, areas, I would say. The one on the on the on the sea level, the coastal side of it, which is beautiful with crystal waters, tapped yet. And this is something maybe I, I will uh, talk more about it. And then we have the desert, which is part of the empty quarter that. Uh, is underdeveloped as well. Uh, people, they know Liwa for a while now, and they they know the festival of Liwa, the Days Festival happening there. But also we have plans to uh, enhance the experience in Liwa uh, to make it part of the journey of Abu Dhabi. So uh, as I can say, you know, like Abu Dhabi, uh, the uniqueness of Abu Dhabi is the hassle-free uh, travel uh, when you come into Abu Dhabi. You can get everything within a short distance you can uh, see the the sea in the same day and then you can go to the mountain and you can also enjoy the empty quarter at night and do a stargazing so the beauty of abu dhabi is where you can do many things within a short period of time uh, with a hassle free it's very convenient it's a family friendly safest city in the world for the fourth time this year so this makes it especially looking into the COVID-19 and what are the concerns will be in the future post-COVID-19 for travelers, I think health and safety will be the major concern of anyone considered to travel post-COVID-19. And here we are in Abu Dhabi, we are taking in consideration uh, to make it the best destination post-COVID-19, assuring the health and safety for the travelers that will come to Abu Dhabi with a, a clean certificate that we're going to issue uh, for all the hotels and uh, attractions in Abu Dhabi that will make people more confident to travel to Abu Dhabi, definitely. Thank you very much. Now, I do want to talk about uh, something that's obviously very important. The elephant in the room, or maybe the elephant that's not in the room, is uh, airlines generally. And uh, uh, I, I think that uh, particular thing is important. But I'd like to give... Uh, any one of you who would like to take the question, you know, from people from outside, they say, well, the United Arab Emirates isn't a huge country. And is there uh, any kind of coordination uh, between all of these Emirates, which are very vibrant? And I think actually it's, it's quite a successful model, personally, the way it works at the moment with each Emirates having its own, let's call it tourism authority or tourism promotion or destination promotion uh, organization. Do, do you coordinate amongst each other in any way uh, to promote the country as a whole as a tourism destination whoever would like to try directly go for it quick no, I, I do want to say i mean the uae is a great example of 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 a successful nation of the way things are i mean i am not a uae national but both my daughters were born here in the in the uae so this has been home for over a decade um but we do coordinate a lot with the other tourism entities there is no ministry of tourism so we all um, have a liaison and we work with the ministry of economy and and as an authority, they've done a great job bringing us all together and also coming up with plans. And we, we had, at the beginning of COVID-19, we had a call with the Minister of Economy to put some initiatives together that would be able to help the tourism industry and the 750,000 employees that are related in it. So, so from that... Well, I'm going to stop you on that one, but thank you for that. And I'm not going to ask the other two gentlemen, because the other two gentlemen, you have uh, very large airlines in charge of uh, Air Arabia. And of course, we have Etihad and now Wizz Air coming in. Uh, and also we have Fly Dubai and of course Emirates. And we have so many airports. Um, how, how do you see the, the, the evolution and development of the uh, strategy of, uh, uh, of airlift into the United Arab Emirates, which we all agree is vital and has been very successful, particularly with Emirates and later with Etihad uh, and what they have achieved. And uh, so Marwan, I, maybe you might like to start there uh, because I haven't spoken to you for a while, uh, just to give us some, uh, some, uh, uh, some outline of it. And then I will ask uh, Mr. Ali as well to talk to us about it. So Mr. Marwan. So, so, so that's, it's very nice for us to see that we have uh, major airports in the United Arab Emirates that are connecting us to the world. Uh, more than four, uh, four uh, aircraft companies functioning in the UAE, more than 100 and maybe 20 million passengers travel through the UAE. I think we, are, we can't wait for the time where that we open up the airport back again to get those yes. uh, travelers <laughs> coming through the Emirates. Because this is today, this is the biggest challenge, and I think um, a country that UAE, like the like the UAE, is depending a lot on tourists. And if tourism is 11 percent of our GDP, right. airports is a major impact on that. So the sooner they're back online, the better it is yeah. for us. 
we are looking to attract international tourists, but with the COVID-19, I think we need to focus okay. a lot on the- in the, long, in the long term, there is coordination. I'm going to, I'm very, very sorry to do this, but blame Jonathan. But uh, Mr. Ali, we'd, I'd really like to hear from you as well, how you see Abu, uh, Abu Dhabi and uh, Dubai, Etihad and Emirates Airlines and everything that's happening there, which I think is very positive for the country. Yeah, actually, uh, we are working together with Etihad and on a regular basis so we are aligning in terms of strategy at the end they are a commercial entity you know like uh, they are uh, th their existence is not mainly to to just bring people to abu dhabi but also as a commercial entity they are profitable and they want to make money as well so we are trying our best here to align the strategies where we are looking into where are the opportunities in the source market we show them how we are planning our, our move uh, when it comes to uh, global uh, marketing and promotion. And they are trying to match their networks with our needs as, as, uh, you know, as they can. So uh, we had a lot of meetings in the, in the past few weeks to, to align the strategies and the plans together. Uh, uh -huh. Speaking about the, the low cost carriers, I think Wiz Air is the new one and also uh, Etihad Air Arabia, there is also a joint venture also has been announced lately. I think the low carriers will add a value definitely to the destination to target yeah. new markets that wasn't in the network of Etihad. And both now with the full, fail, a full fare carriers and the low carriers, we have a great opportunity as Abu Dhabi to grow our markets. And I think Rafael Khema hasn't gone to sleep either on the, uh, on the airline side. But I know Jonathan's come back on. I would just like to say that I first came to this country in 1978. Uh, that's 42 years ago. And I spent 35 years in total here. And I would say thank you, the Emiratis, for being so good to us guys who have come and lived here. And what a fantastic place. Thank to be. you. And we hope, look forward to our mm -hmm. visitors back to the United Arab Emirates very soon. Great. Thank you so much, Gerald, Bracky, Marwan. Thank Ali, you. Thank uh, you so good that you were able to get all such nice things about you to begin with as well. And you didn't hear any of it. But uh, I just want to thank you for everything you've done for the industry over the years. Uh, you've been a great supporter of ours with the Arabian Hotel Investment Conference, which we kicked off together some 15 years ago now, hoping that's going to be at the Madden at Jumeirah in September this year. Coming back to Dubai, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But uh, listen, thank you so much. Thanks. And uh, thank you for everything you're doing for us, for the industry. And uh, Keep well, stay safe. And congratulations to you, Jonathan, on this event. It's fantastic. Great initiative. Well done. I see even still there's 1,207 people uh, listening. Well, uh, as soon as you got on screen, uh, Gerald, the numbers just, you know, went straight up. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see Bye. you. Thank you so much. And do stay around. Do some networking.